All right. So last year, this month, we did the four agreements. And this year, this month, we're going to do the four agreements. <laughs> because I don't know anything better. I don't know a better way to, to um, really anchor us in a way of life, a way of awakening, a way of kicking off our year. Can you turn down the monitor for me, please? That'd be great. Thank you. The four agreements draw on long tradition of the Toltecs, an ancient indigenous people of Mexico, to show you that we have been domesticated from childhood, how these, uh, we have been domesticated from childhood, how these internal guiding rules hurt us, and what we can do to break and replace them with a new set of agreements with ourselves. So the book begins by telling us that we're living in a collective dream. There's a dream that you're separate from God. There's a dream that you're separate from the power of life that can heal you, that can source and sustain you, that can fulfill every dream, great and small. There's a dream that you're not okay. And that's what keeps the dream going. The dream sustains itself on punishment. The dream sustains itself on a shared belief to lesser or greater degrees that I'm not enough. The dream sets up a perfection idea that we must obtain and be. And so instead of striving to know the grace of God, instead of striving to really anchor yourself in the, the power of love that you are, we strive for perfection. We strive for an unobtainable goal of being something other than who we are. And when someone says to you, well, instead, strive and put all your energy and direction towards the vibration of love and God that you are, a voice in your head says, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? To, to strive with our full being to know God um, can sound too much out there in the world. It's certainly not something you'd share with your person working next to you, right? Hey, what's going on? I'm striving to know God more. How are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? We get a little self-conscious. But if they said, hey, what's going on? You said, you know, I'm striving to make my body better. I'm striving to change this thing in my life. I'm striving to X, Y, and Z to make more money. That those become the conversations of the day. And they're not bad things to want in alignment with the God of your being. But when they're separate and when the impulse for what you want comes from the dream of separation, then it's like the dream hijacked what you desire, and now it becomes all of your efforting. You're moving forward, you're moving backwards, your identification by what you do or don't accomplish. It's insanity. It's insanity. Now, the way that this dream keeps itself alive is through agreements. You've been absorbing agreements since you were born. You've been just taking them in, taking them in, saying yes to them, yes to them. So you have, imagine your brain filled with thousands and thousands of agreements. And this is what runs our life. And so the spiritual awakening, according to the, uh, to the four agreements, is to make new agreements to allow the older ones to be broken, not by focusing on them and efforting there, but by placing your attention on higher vibration agreements that connect you back to God. Does that make sense? Follow me? So the four agreements are, the first one is to be impeccable with your word. We're going to talk about that today. The next one is don't take anything personally. The next one is don't make any assumptions. And the last one is always do your best. Super easy, right? <laughs> right? I could actually just get through those today. <laughs> easy to read. <laughs> easy to read. And practice them is what we're here to do. So the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. To be impeccable. 
impeccable is such a, a, a the word impeccable is, is such a close vibration to perfection that we have to take a moment and separate the two. Because this isn't about being perfect. This is about impeccability, striving and aiming your attention toward impeccability, integrity. And, you know, when we go out of integrity, it's not about judging ourselves. It's about noticing it and just getting ourselves back into integrity, right? Perhaps some of you have heard this, um, the idea that if a plane flies from New York to Los Angeles, it's mostly off course, It spends its time staying on course, going off course, on course. That's sort of the journey of the plane. It obviously stays on the course, but it it fluctuates around it. That's the same with us. And if you'll give yourself the grace to really let yourself just keep refocusing as much as you need to, you've already created a compassionate container to practice this first agreement. Please let me say that again, because that's vitally important that you have a compassionate container around yourself to practice these new agreements. So your word is your wand. That's what they teach in the book. Your word is your wand. And some people do white magic. Some people do what is called black magic, good magic, bad magic. Whichever way you swing the magic wand, whichever way your words go, that is the... (laughs) Oh, (laughs) that was too soon. (laughs) So my question to you is, are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? Slide. Are you using this wand or that wand? You see, when we use the bad witch wand, ways of like, next slide, fear, lies, gossip, doubt, when we use that word, then we suffer the toxicity of that word. And we don't realize enough that your words have vibration. You are vibrational being. Your vibrational being is expressed through your word. And so if your word is a negative, dark vibration, that becomes your experience. Whether that word is about yourself or that word is about someone else. It doesn't matter because it's happening inside your vibration. Can you understand that? Please wake up from the dream that speaking negatively about someone else is about someone else. It's not. It's not. It is 100% about you. This is grown-up conversation. Your words are 100% about you. The, The illusion, the dream says, oh, that person over there. But because you said it and pointed it out and saw their problem instead of their perfection of spirit, you now suffer the vibration of that. And you don't get to have the... um passive-aggressive bypasses of adding, bless their heart. (laughs) Not here. Not here. The very, very highest vibration of using your word to gain insight is by simply, I mean, you could really play this game in a very powerful way, With love. The only way this game is played that you win is with love is you go, oh, I'm seeing over there someone acting selfish. Where is that in me? I'm seeing someone over there really angry and upset. Where is that in me? This becomes the the real game because you're waking up to the world that you're seeing is the world that you're creating. You can't see someone else's world. You can't. And our word is the way that connects us or disconnects us. Now, I want to stay on this lying bit. Gossiping is obvious. I just said that. But the lying is on a lot of levels. And when I was in India, it was interesting because they were teaching the idea that if you tell a white lie, we all know what that means, a a, a polite lie, 
to someone, oh, this tastes delicious, <laughs> right? If we do that and we know that we're doing that, but we're doing that to be kind, it lays in the vibration of kindness. Does that make sense? I'm not giving you permission to walk around, you know, and do nothing. But think about that for a moment. If from your heart you're being kind, that's the vibration. And you know inside yourself what is true or not true. And there are times when that can stay inside. Where it gets dangerous is when you begin believing the lies about the other people. You begin thinking, oh, that person is selfish. That person is greedy. That person is an addict. That person is wrong. When you begin believing those things about other people, you have just caused harm to yourself and to them. Because our practice is to see them as holy, see them as holy, in the midst, see them as holy, in the world, but not of the world. This is spiritual practice. This is what we do. And again, we fall down a thousand times a day. But refocus, refocus, refocus. And then the next level of lying, self-deception. The lies that we tell ourselves the lies that we tell ourselves to keep going. Yes, I'm really happy here. Yes, it's okay to eat that. Yes, it's okay to do this one time. These self-deceptions and the known ones are the ones that were challenged. There's unknown stories about yourself. The way you think negatively of another, that also lives, you're lying to yourself. Every time you tell yourself you're not good enough, you're, you're deceiving yourself. Every time you tell yourself you're less than holy, you are lying. You are using your word against yourself. And you're unable in that moment and for many moments afterward until it dissolves, unable to see your own beauty and your own inner power and grace. So there's lots of layers to these kind of deceptions. And again, we established a container of compassion, so we're looking because it's time for them to dissolve. Yes? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, if you're a good witch, <laughs> then you're a person that feels the vibration of encouragement, positivity, goodness, and praise. This is, obviously, we get this. This is the good use of your word. What we don't get, and what I hope we'll get together, myself included, friends, is that we must put muscle and energy and intention and focus into being here, even at times when it feels fake. Do you ever hear the saying, fake it until you make it? This is a good place to hang out. This is a good place to practice because you are the commander of your vibration. And at the ultimate level of mastery, which you shall become and is available inside of you, you will always command your vibration where it will go. And you will not be susceptible to the collective patterns. You will command where you want it to go. But the beginning of that feels phony. But this, we practice here, we practice here, and we practice here. There are two ways to be fooled by your word. Believe what isn't true and refuse to believe what is true. So I just talked about both of those, but let's sort of get the drill down the next level. Believing what isn't true about you or another is a, is, is a misuse of your word. Go back, please. Thank you. And the second one is to refuse to believe what is true. And have you ever done this? Someone says, you look fantastic today. Oh. You literally slap it. <laughs> literally, there's this wonderful thing coming right at you and you go, Phew. whoo, saved myself from that positivity. <laughs> we do that throughout the day. Oh, this old thing. Or, you know, someone gives you a compliment, you know, oh, you're looking great. Ten more to go. <laughs> Who asked you? I'm not even interested in that, right? 
These are ways that works both ways. All positivity, receive it, receive it, receive it. Practice believing it. Practice believing it. This is the work to lift yourself up, to believe yourself as a magnificent light and power. And again, the dream, the dream did not teach you that. The dream said, you're not that, Jesus is that. There's a few really great people walking the planet. You ain't one of them. (laughs) Right? That's what the dream said. Our school systems taught us that. Our school systems taught us comparison. That one's smarter. That one's not. That one's creative. That one's not. The whole system not a horrible, but we got to look at it from that portal, from that point of view. The system caused you to compare, contrast, diminish, delete, eliminate, put under the rug that magnificent part of you. So those are the things that we must be dissolved. These are the things that we want to disappear and refusing to believe what is true. And what do we do here at Unity? We begin by, we, we go right to the source. We go right to the Godhead. We go right to the power. And we talk about that. And we identify ourselves with that in this safe, sacred place. <laughs> right? Because there's still a lot of religions that would think it's blasphemy to think yourself a perfect, beautiful creation of God. And that's okay. Everyone's on their journey. But here is where we must allow ourselves to entertain the truth. And so there are four agreements. There are four truths. The first truth, I am created in the image and likeness of God. I am that. Reverend Eileen talked about this at the burning bowl ceremony. This idea that, and it was really wonderful, wonderful how she said, I don't know if I can get it right. Um, The image, oh shoot, I'm not going to get it right. Eileen, where are you? What did you say? I'm sorry, she's got to come up because I don't want to sabotage it. No, come up here. (laughs) Okay, hi. We are God's image. God only sees us as its image, okay? And Jesus is the one who brought that into likeness. He's the one who perfected that and said, oh, I know how to bring that image forward in myself and for others. So Jesus brought us the way to get in touch with our image through the likeness. Uh, Yes, that's fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) I'll say it in my words in case you didn't get it because that was really, I love the idea. Even when she said it to me before, I was like, God, that's really good. I'm stealing that. And so the, God sees you as the image. Think of like a um, a negative of of a picture. That's the image. You are the blueprint, the image of God. The likeness of God is its expression. Do you get that? You are as God created you, and the likeness of that is how you play it, how you express it. Is that? That's right, right? How you give it, how you share it, how you be it. So this is the number one truth. You are created, let's say this together, I am created in the image and likeness of God. I am that. And that is our pointer. And that is the pointer used all day long. I am that love. I am that power. I'm not this problem. I am the solution. I am the source. I am that. I am that. I am that. I am that. You play it over and over and over. And it will establish a higher vibration of being that you are. The second truth, I am powerful creator. I have within me all the forces of the universe. This is an important one to understand. Can you imagine the galaxies upon galaxies and all the universes? They can't even find them all with telescopes. We don't yet have advanced enough systems to go as far as the galaxies stretch in space. And we don't have, I don't believe, the the instruments to measure it because I think it's infinite. 
The power that balances all, let's just, let's not even go way out there. Let's just stay in our own Milky Way. Let's stay in our own planetary system where the balancing of nine planets, correct? Anyone? (laughs) Nine planets? Ah, well, I'm talking. So I, I remember learning that as a kid. If more have appeared, then I missed that memo. So whatever the amount of planets, in balance, doing what they're doing, us on this brilliant planet that is sustaining life and evolving life. And even though it looks like there's some real destructive things, there are, even though there's planetary issues, there are, we will always have the solution. We will always have the solution when we begin to focus. And you know, it's human nature. Sometimes you've got to bottom out first. You've got to get bad enough. And then, boom, we move and life starts rebirthing itself. We always, always, always have that. That magnificent creative power that causes all this beauty in which we sit, that's your power. You are plugged in, tapped in, turned on to the same power source. Now, some people go to this power source with a big, huge dump truck and just fill it up 80 times a day. And some people go with a little straw. And they take just a little bit and they go, that's all I get today. And they look at the big dump truck people and they go, selfish, bad. (laughs) Right? Look at me, my little straw. I'm a good, holy person. There is no right in... There is no right and wrong. There just is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. <clears throat> there is no <clears throat> right or wrong in your way. God, that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> I do not like listening to froggy voices. <clears throat> there is no right and wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have full power and full access and if you're going to the source with a straw just own that don't make yourself bad and wrong but my guess is if you are and it's hard you might want something big you might want to at least up level to the garden hose (laughs) right and then to the fire hose (laughs) And then create this, there's, you have all the power within you. And this is every stage of life, people. For those of us who are moving into, well, I have a limited form of income. Now my life is limited. That can never be true. You can accept that and make peace with it and enjoy it, absolutely. But never affirm that that's what you are. On our 99th birthday, we have full access to create and to solve and to be whatever is needed and wanted. You are magnificent creator. Let us say this together. I am powerful creator. I have within me all the forces of the universe. Breathe in. <sighs> Let that be true for you. Our third truth. I am love. I am love. And we know this and you've said this and you get it intellectually. But to really understand this as there's only love that you can be. It's not your love and there's something else. It's not like you are made of love and this dream is real. It's I am love, period. (laughs) I am that, and that's all I am, and that's all I can be, and that's all I'll ever be. Why? Because God is that, and the image of God is love, and and the expression of God as love is you. So it's a perfect equation, and it doesn't alter. It's never altered. The only difference is your knowing of this and your willingness to let this truth lift you higher and higher, more and more. I always say when I do weddings, I love doing weddings. It's a very sacred thing to officiate. And I tell every couple, I I put this in every single talk, that as the years go by, never, ever, ever ask, where did the love go? 
Don't ever ask that question. It will, you'll always lose. Ask the question, who is love calling me to be? Who is love calling me to be here and now? Who is love calling to be at this season of life? Who is love calling me to be with my child? Who is love calling me to be in relationship with money? With all of my relationships, wherever there seems to be not enough God, who is love calling me to be? And I don't have to go far to get that because I am love. Say with me, I am love. Say it again, I am love. Yes. And then our fourth truth I think I'm going to have to write the book against the four agreements, the four truths. I like it. Just a thought for me. Um, number four, behold, I make all things new. I love this. I love this. Behold, I make all things new. And this is about you too. You have the power with your word to make all things new. No matter how far down the scale Things have come, no matter how broken that relationship appears to be, no matter how bankrupt whatever is happening, you have the power to make things new. Behold, I make things new. How do you make things new? With a fresh perspective, a fresh idea, empowering, enlivening words. Impeccability with your word means that you use your word to do this within yourself, within your relationship, and trust me, you start using your words to make things new. Wow, watch how God uses you. There will be, your, your influence will expand so quickly. When you open your eyes, in the morning, everything looks like it did the other day. And the people in your life look like they did the other day. But you do understand that our mind traps people in our lives 20 years ago. This is why when we meet someone new, we feel alive. Because they're seeing me as innocent and new and capable and cool and fun. You haven't been doing that for years. Right? We feel alive when a new person comes into our life and they feel like a soulmate. And we love talking with them because you, you are alive. You're making new the experience of relationship. Now, I don't want you bunny hopping to new relationships all the time. I want you to practice doing that in the most sacred ones, the ones that are in your very house, the ones that are in your very, very family. You don't have to go to India to awaken and, and go to all the tests and trials. Just stay in your family, right? <laughs> and do the work there. You can make new your relationships. Every one of them can be made new by you. Let's say this together. Behold, I make all things new. So last year we did this and we'll do this again. I invite you to join with this. It is our 21-day challenge beginning now. <laughs> Unplug from the negativity. 21 days from the negative conversations as best you can, from the negative things happening on the television. From the, I promise you, if there's something happening in life that you need to know, it will find you. Because you're supposed to know it. And I know it sounds crazy at this time of life when I say, unplug from that dualistic, warring world for 21 days. And it sounds crazy, like, oh my God, what will happen if I don't know? What will happen is God will prepare you to be part of a solution of love. If you'll just fast from the negativity to the best of your ability, speaking first and foremost, no gossip, no lying. Well, you can do your little white lies if you need to from love and <laughs> kindness. But you know what I mean. Just stop speaking ill against yourself and against another. For 21 days, your consciousness will be purified. And add to that rampages of appreciation. <laughs> Ram I love rampages of appreciation. 
If, you, if your mind starts going down a rabbit hole, which it will do, it's totally fine. It's addicted to negative rabbit holes. It's what happens. If it starts to go down, how can you turn it around? Rampage of appreciation. I'll show you one. I am the love of God. All that's happening is God. I am surrounded by this source energy. Every breath I take is the life of God living me. Solutions abound. I am the creator of solutions. I am the vibration of love. And everything is my creation. And I call it good. I call it good. I call it good. Heck, no, I don't call it good. I call it great. I call it amazing. This is who and what my life is right here and now. It's amazing. This amazing place. This amazing, look at this out there. That's amazing. There's so much good around me, right? That's a rampage of appreciation. Just go, just go. And if it doesn't work in a minute, do two. And if it doesn't work in two, do four. Stay on the mat, stay on the mat. Transformation will be yours. These four agreements are very powerful. And so we begin together today be impeccable with your word. In the circle of compassion, so much compassion, you will rise up much, quick, much more quickly if you do it that way. Yes? yes? Yes. Let us pray. I invite our prayer chaplains and ministers and licensed union teachers to stand. I love to invite you to look around the room. These people have studied and spent their time learning the art of prayer, the science of prayer, so that they can serve you. And I stand on their shoulders as I allow this prayer to flow through me. I invite you to open your hands, lift up your chin so your voice and your heart is open as we welcome this amazing, amazing grace. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Twas blind, but now I see. And this is this, this amazing grace that I know has brought us to this very conversation. It is this amazing grace that has brought this perfect collection of people together in community of truth. This amazing grace heals, restores, uplifts, purifies, is eternal. And when we see it and feel it, we're in awe because it's awesome. This amazing grace is who and what I am. And this amazing grace is who and what we are. From my place of oneness with this power, I speak this prayer for us, activating a clear intention of impeccability with our word. And I ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and support us and do the heavy lifting for us. Lift us up. Help us to see with love when we fall. Help us to get back on the, the impeccability horse ride as many times as we have to. Help us to love ourselves, love ourselves, love ourselves. Help us, Holy Spirit, to keep our mouths shut more and listen more. Holy Spirit, we ask to be purified of mind. And we ask that all ways that our word has been used against ourselves and others be forgiven. Right here and right now, all cords are cut. There is no karmic repercussions left to the negative words that have been used in the past even a moment ago. They are healed by the power of forgiveness. And we sit here, behold, making this moment brand new. We begin again right here, right now, connected to the source of love, knowing that we are divine creators and that the wand, the magic wand we use is our word and that we swing it with love. We swing it with solution. We swing it in the direction of health and wholeness and vitality and joy. And when we can't seem to find those words, we lay the wand down and we just be still 
and let this amazing grace do its work. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears really how fresh was the that grace did appear the hour I first believed sing along with us amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see and now we do see now we are connected to the truth of who we are we see and we know and it is amazing and I am so grateful I'm grateful for the fulfillment of this prayer in this moment and grateful for the prayer that goes before us carrying all of us all week long in its protection and care and guidance. Grateful for this, we let it be. This prayer is fulfilled, and so it is. Amen. Amen. T'was blind, but now I see. Beautiful.